A couple of years ago I made a PIC microcontroller programmer for the Raspberry Pi and in that time I've, there's a few updates that I've wanted to make and because the project that I'm currently working on requires one of the updates to be made I went through and, and did all the updates and I'll, in this video I'll go through first of all the, the differences between the last version and the current version and I'll go through on the circuit diagram how, how it was implemented electronically and then lastly I'll go through the software updates and the demonstration of the software at the end of the video. So all of the information is available on the, Git, on the GitHub repository including the source code and the circuit diagram. Uh, so this is the last version which I'd made a couple of years ago and this is the new version. Um, and if I just go through on the old version. Uh, so there's a few modifications I've made which I wanted to integrate first of all to, with, the, with the new circuit. Uh, and from the old version I wanted to get rid of this uh, boost converter which only all it does is provide the 13 volts programming voltage because you can't get that directly off the Raspberry Pi uh, so now if I go on to the new version so I've I've integrated some of the changes from the previous circuit so there's no updates manual updates on the top part and on this uh, bottom part um, what I've done is replaced the boost converter with a, it's just a, um, an oscillator, a two transistor flip-flop oscillator which generates quite high frequency and then that drives um, some transistors over here which drive a charge pump here and that, the output of the charge pump goes to a Zen diode which is a 13 volt Zen diode and that provides a 13 volts for programming voltage for the actual uh, pick microcontrollers but as well as that uh, one of the outputs of the oscillator also goes up to the top board because there was an issue with s some of the um, pick microcontrollers don't have internal oscillators so in this part of the circuit I've got like a test switch and a test LED uh, and I've, I've written a test programs for each of the microcontrollers which are supported uh, and that test program is in a directory in the source code uh, which is on github uh, and that's it. that's available there as the actual original source code and also the compiled um, code uh, for each of the microcontrollers which are supported uh, and all it, the, the test program for each microcontroller does exactly the same thing so you press this button and then this LED flashes three times and that provides a way of just verifying that the program is working for that microcontroller so if for example I was um, developing a project uh, and I was having problems getting the program running, I could rule out the uh, actual microcontroller and the programming process for the microcontroller by just loading up a test program, running it, and then I know at least that the, the microcontroller is working properly uh, and it actually is it, it's running on this circuit as well. So the test programs, they use the internal oscillator on the microcontroller where they can or they use this external oscillator to drive the microcontroller um, if there isn't an internal oscillator available. And much of the rest of this circuit is is very similar to the original uh, so the actual uh, programming uh, part of the circuit is the same. Um, when you power on, so you can power on uh, the microcontroller f for to be able to test it uh, and the power on used to just power up the fi uh, the or the supply voltage for the microcontroller, uh, but when you powered it off, because through the other pins you can get the voltage going back through the ground pin, it kind of half powers up the microcontroller, which was a bit of an issue. Um, so I've also switched as well as switching the power uh, rail on for the for the testing of the microcontrollers. I also switch on and off the ground rail, uh, which helps a lot with the. Uh, with the way that it works and then the other change I've made is I've put a interface here for the UART on the Raspberry Pi and that's got nothing to do with the microcontroller programming uh, but because some of the microcontroller stuff I'm about to do it, uh, it requires me to communicate to the microcontroller through the UART interface so because they're on pins over here and I want to develop the, the actual code on the same uh, Raspberry Pi that I'm actually doing the PIC programming on so I've taken the outputs from here to here, but not directly to here because the Raspberry Pi operates off of 3.3 volts. And when I'm using a PIC microcontroller in circuit, I'll probably want to drive that by 5 volts. So the output of the UART 
interface will be five volts. So I've also got some transistors and resistors in here to do level shifting so that I don't um, break the Raspberry Pi by putting five volts across the, the UART interface. And as you can see here, I've made a couple of mods already on this version, which I've put on the um, on the circuit diagram. Uh, but I'm, it's not worth me rebuilding another one of these circuits um, just for these two mods. So next time I make a new version, uh, which I've got no plans to do at the minute because I can't. There's nothing else I want to put on there. Uh, but next time I make a new version, then those will be already integrated into the circuit. So this is the circuit diagram. As I said, this is in the GitHub repository. Uh, so if I zoom into this to make it a bit easier to see. Uh, and in the top left corner. Uh, so this is um, an area where I've got the UART um, uh, level shifting. And uh, so it's very, it's pretty simple. So on the RX uh, side of things, uh, I've got an input transistor here, which um, is pulled up to this 3.3 volt level. So that converts the input to 3.3 volts. Uh, but because the transistor inverts the signal, uh, I've got another transistor here uh, to, to re-invert the signal uh, so that the signal is uh, in its normal form. And then on the transmitting side here, um, the signal comes in from this transistor over here. Uh, and then again, because the signal is uh, going through transistor, it's inverted, so I've got the second transistor to invert it. Uh, and that the output of that um, is pulled up to this five volt level. So, uh, so the UR time uh, converting to five volts on the output, so that and three point three volts on the input. Um, and then if I move further down the circuit, so this is where I have, I've put an oscillator in for to generate the thirteen volts for the programming voltage. Um, so that, that's just a simple transistor flip-flop. Uh, if you look in previous videos, my, I use this simple circuit all the time for different things. And then below that, this is the charge pump. So I've got like a few transistors driving the voltage up and down um, to get the power. Uh, and it goes through a diode, then capacitor, uh, diode, capacitor, and then I've got a third stage diode and capacitor which uh, which um, increases the voltage at each stage uh, and the inputs to each each one is like this clock over here that clock clock output then this clock output and then as you can see the first clock output can be used again to, to drive the third stage and you can keep doing that to increase the voltage more and more but of course as you increase the voltage the amount of current that you can drive with uh, decreases uh, and that's converted to 13 volts here after the last diode um, with this center diode, which is a 13 volt zener diode. Now the output of uh, one of the oscillator stages here um, also goes up to the top board. Uh, so this is the this is the uh, place where um, when the PIC microcontroller doesn't have an internal oscillator, I can take this oscillation uh, output and put it into the oscillator pin of, um, of the PIC microcontroller and drive the drive the PIC microcontroller. So when I do a test circuit, actually the program actually runs. And if I come across, um, so this, this part, this is a bit in the middle here. Uh, and as I scroll upwards, uh, all of this part is, is standard. So if you look in the original video, you can, uh, you can see an explanation of, of all of this uh, part of the circuit. There's only one difference uh, in that. Uh, the ground which goes to the top, uh, the top of the board, the top board where the microcontrollers are, uh, that's driven from here, uh, which is now switched via this transistor here, which is an existing transistor. Uh, and that's done so that I can actually fully power off the PIC microcontroller because previously I was only um, switching off the VDD part uh, and which was switched by this transistor here. Uh, and that was allowing the PIC microcontroller to still be a little bit powered up, uh, which is causing a few issues because the, the microcontroller would still run. It would actually run 
uh, program um, which caused me issues writing to EPROMs in the, in the my controller but that's all solved now with that part of the circuit. So the only other part is the uh, top board where I've got all the sockets for the different sizes of um, my controller. Uh, and that's basically the same. I've re rearranged it a bit so that there's a few, there's a couple of resistors uh, on the top board. So these ones here. So I'd had duplicate resistors uh, f uh, for different sockets on the top, and I've just simplified it to a couple of resistors uh, at the top there. And um, also the I bring the oscillator um, signal up here, uh, and then I can I can then take it in to the various microcontrollers in the oscillator pin. So that, I can, so that my test program works, uh, but apart from that, uh, the oscillator, the top board is is pretty much the same as it was before. So I've got a, uh, a PIC twelve F six eight three here, which I'll put on the programming board, and um, I'll just go through some of the features of the software. So I've done some updates, which might actually make it a lot quicker uh, and. Um, a, more, a lot more reliable to use. So these are the supported um, devices. So here's the 12F683. So if I go um, display minus D with the device number and it shows you what's in the memory. And so all the memory bits are, are clear. And down here you can see it actually reads the information about the device from the device. So it can verify that you've got the right device in the programmer. Uh, and this is all the program memory up here, and it's all blank. Uh, but you can do, uh, if you don't want, don't want a big display, you can just do a, a minus B for a blank check, and it will tell you if the various parts of the device are blank. And when, so up here where it says uh, not blank, that, that's for the device ID, so the device ID won't be blank, um, but everything else is blank in the chip. Um, and then, I can do this, I can write, and I can write from the test program. Uh, so in the test ASM directory is where all the test programs are. And 683, and then just to write the hex file um, to the device. And then you can do, uh, if you go up, if you edit that line and just change the W to a V to verify, that verifies the uh, device. Uh, so what's in the device memory with the with the hex file which you originally wrote and you can see that all the passes um, but if you if you've got code protect and data protect on the pick in your program configuration uh, then it won't be able to verify because it, it won't be able to read the data back out of the of the microcontroller so if I power on the, the device um, minus P uh, then when I hit the uh, test button you should see the test LED flash on and off uh, three times which verifies that the actual microcontroller is working so now even so i'll power off again um so now even for the um devices which don't have an internal clock uh because i'm bringing the oscillator up for my for my programming board i can actually test those as well